a society that wasn't um, accepting of same-sex sexual activity, uh, someone who had same-sex attractions might want to then identify as the opposite sex so then they could um, act on those in a more socially um, uh, acceptable way. You, you sometimes see some of this in some um, Middle Eastern countries where um, gays and lesbians will actually transition uh, rather than act on their um, same-sex attractions. All right, so all that, you know, that's the the prepubertal boy, the middle-aged man. Um, the something new under the sun was the, you know, 4,400% uh, increase in the United Kingdom of, you know, high school and college-age girls who were going to mm -hmm. um, the gender clinic seeking, you know, either assistance or, you know, transitioning um, uh, procedures. That, you know, was not the historical record. You know, when you talk to Paul McHugh, uh, the head of psychiatry at Johns Hopkins, who shut down the uh, sex reassignment clinic at Hopkins back in the 70s, the two most typical type of patients was that prepubertal boy and the middle-aged man. To then say all of a sudden there's this rise of um, high school, college age girls suggests that this something else might be going on. That this isn't you know Lady Gaga born that way style <laughs> phenomenon. That there might be something about our culture, something about some of the ideologies floating around in our culture that's making a certain cohort of young women simply reject their femininity, reject their embodiment as woman, and not necessarily embrace a masculine or a male identity. So that's also what's interesting is that yeah. a lot of the rise, as you pointed out, it's it's the nine binary identification, just as it was, it was the bisexual identification, you know, a generation or a decade ago when you were in high school. Um, I think something like that's similar. It's not that they are identifying as a boy or as a man or as male, whatever. It's that they're rejecting their female identity. And that and should lead researchers to ask questions why. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And that's one of the saddest components here. So many young girls do not want to be girls or women. Now, when you look at the average age of first exposure to pornography in this country, it continually falls. So studies now are saying it's like 11 years old with the youngest people sampled having been seven years old at the age of first exposure. You can understand a girl encountering pornographic content saying, I don't want to be a girl. I don't want to be one. I'm just seeing how women are treated in a pornified culture in general and saying that they want no part of that. And with the non-binary aspect of it, it's almost as if there's not merely a rejection of their own sex, but a rejection uh, of, of masculinity, manhood, and any any hope of or desire to relate with or to men. Because now you're in this other category that's that's outside of sex, right? You're not a man or a woman. You're, you're not anatomically compatible with anybody. You're just existing in a kind of strange asexual way, at least with respect to your identity.